Welcome to our study of the Fundamentals of Operating Systems. This series of lectures is based on the book Operating System Concepts, 10th edition by Silvershots, Galvin, and Gagney, and published by Wiley Publishing. In the previous lesson, we discussed the reader's writer's problem of synchronization in the operating system area. Now we're going to pick up on another topic, the dining philosopher's problem. So let's pick up where we left off. Let's consider five philosophers who spend their lives thinking and eating. The philosophers share a circular table surrounded by five chairs, each belonging to one philosopher. In the center of the bowl is a bowl of rice, and the table is laid with five single chopsticks as shown here. This is great. The, in the last textbook I used when teaching this course, the authors had the philosophers eating spaghetti with a fork. Now it's rice and a chopstick. Well, let's get back to the problem. The philosopher does not interact with colleagues. From time to time, a philosopher gets hungry and tries to pick up the two chopsticks that are the closest. That would be the chopsticks that are on the left and right of the philosopher's bowl. A philosopher may pick up only one chopstick at a time. A chopstick that is already being held by a neighbor cannot be picked up. When a hungry philosopher has both chopsticks at the same time, he or she eats without releasing chopsticks. When finished eating, the philosopher puts down both chopsticks and starts thinking again. The dining philosopher problem is considered a classic synchronization because it's an example of a large class of concurrency control problems. It's a simple presentation of the need to allocate several resources among several processors in a deadlock-free and starvation-free manner. Now how do we solve this problem? One simple solution is to represent each chopstick with a semaphore. A philosopher tries to grab a chopstick by executing a weight operation on that semaphore and release the chopstick by executing a signal operation on the appropriate semaphore. So the shared data are semaphore chopstick with five elements, where all the elements of chopstick are initialized to one. Remember, we have five philosophers. The structure of philosopher is shown in this slide. As you can see, our philosopher, that's philosopher I, first decrements the chopstick on the left and then the chopstick on the right. The philosopher eats for a while and puts down the chopsticks. Then the philosopher increments the chopstick on the left with a signal I, and then the chopstick on the right with a signal I plus one, making the chopsticks available to anyone. I wouldn't be eating at that table, I'll tell you. Our philosopher can then go back to thinking for a while. Although this solution guarantees that no two neighbors are eating simultaneously, it must still be rejected because it can create a deadlock. Suppose that all five philosophers become hungry at the same time and each picks up the chopstick on the left. All the elements of chopstick will now be equal to zero and all five of them are gone. When each philosopher tries to pick up the right chopstick, he or she will be delayed forever because all the philosophers will be waiting to get that right chopstick. Several possible remedies to the chopstick problem are included here. First, uh, we could allow at most four philosophers to be sitting simultaneously at the table. Of course, that would leave a seat available, wouldn't it? Or we could allow a philosopher to pick up the chopsticks only if both chopsticks are available. Now, in order to do this, the chopsticks would, must be in some critical section. Thirdly, we could use an asymmetric solution. That is, an odd-numbered philosopher picks up first her left chopstick and then her right. 
whereas an even-numbered philosopher picks up her right chopstick and then her left. That'd be interesting to see how that would be coded. Later, we'll talk about a solution to the dining philosopher's problem that ensures freedom from deadlocks. Note, however, that any satisfactory solution to the dining philosopher's problem must guard against the possibility that one of those philosophers will starve to death. A deadlock-free solution does not necessarily eliminate the possibility of starvation. Well, that concludes our discussion of the dining philosopher's problem of synchronization. Let's take a break here so that you can update your study guide, take care of any other business that you need to do, and then when you're ready, come on back, and we'll start looking at how the Windows operating system provides synchronization. <laughs>